Hi, I'm Noel. Today on JotForm, we're exploring one of the most useful tools when it comes to collecting survey information. The one and only Likert Scales. Whether you're collecting feedback from a customer service experience or gauging the public's opinion on global warming, Likert Scales are a top surveying tool. Today we'll learn about how Likert Scales came to be, what they are exactly, and the varying types that exist. Let's go. Whether you're familiar with the name or not, you've likely seen or filled out a Likert scale survey at least once in your life. Look familiar? For generations, organizations have used Likert scale surveys to determine how people feel about specific topics, like determining someone's attitude towards an event, experience, or object. In just a little bit, we'll see exactly how that happens. But first, let's explore the Likert scale origin. These surveys seem to be everywhere, but where did they come from, you ask? The Likert scale gets its name from Rensis Likert, a highly influential social psychologist. Around 1932, he developed the Likert scales. A Likert scale asks a question or prompt and typically gives four, five, or seven options for responses. These responses range from polar opposites, such as complete satisfaction to complete dissatisfaction, with more moderate options in between. The Likert scale has become essential in research and is one of the most common survey tools used today. It not only measures a person's opinion, but also the intensity of that particular opinion. Let's dig a little deeper into what exactly a Likert scale is. Likert scales are psychometric scales used in surveys. A few different components can make them very effective, such as the types of questions they ask, their use of four, five, or seven answer options only, and occasionally utilizes the forced answer option. Let's start off with an imaginary scenario. Close your eyes. It's beachy and beautiful, and behind you is a gorgeous hotel you're staying at for the weekend. The room is immaculate, the bed is like a cloud, the pool is clean, and not a child in sight. Wait, where did you find this place? It sounds amazing. Oh, let me get back on track. So you had a wonderful tropical getaway experience. The hotel follows up with a survey asking, did you enjoy your stay with us? Sure, the options yes or no would suffice, but with a Likert scale, the hotel will gain a lot more insight. How likely are you to recommend our hotel to a friend? Definitely, very likely, likely, possibly, somewhat unlikely, very unlikely, definitely not. Of course, you would select definitely, and not only would the hotel gather that you had a good stay, but the intensity of how good your stay was, so much so that you definitely recommend it to a friend. The goal of Likert scale survey questions is to measure the strength of a person's opinion, how important something is to them, their likelihood of taking an action, or the relevance of something to them. We're not talking about your typical yes or no survey questions. The question, have you traveled more than 500 miles from your home on vacation, wouldn't be as helpful as the question, how likely are you to take a vacation at least 500 miles from home in the next year? The first would yield a yes or no answer, as the person simply either has or hasn't traveled more than 500 miles from their home on a vacation. The second question would yield more telling responses ranging from definitely, very likely, likely, possibly, somewhat likely, very unlikely, and definitely not. Also, successful Likert surveys can pose their scenarios in the form of answers rather than actual questions. Think, I prefer to shop in stores versus do you shop in stores often? Or how important is it to you that your physician graduated from an Ivy League medical school? And how often do you travel by plane for business? Wording the scenario in the form of a statement instead of a question attempts to measure agreement, value, and frequency. Strategic prompts and multiple answer options are what sets Likert scale surveys above the rest. Likert scale scenarios give the person being surveyed either four, five, or seven answers to choose from. In any given survey, there isn't a fixed number of choices. Think back to our hotel example. Our seven options range from the extremes of definitely recommending to definitely not recommending, 
with options in between for moderate responses. The Likert scale presumes a person's opinion or attitude moves in increments from the two extreme options through more moderate opinions and steers away from retrieving simple and unhelpful answers. Later on in this video, we'll visit each type of Likert scale individually to fully grasp what they're all about. Although a Likert scale typically offers an odd number of answers to allow for a neutral answer, some surveys take away the neutral option, thus gathering what we call forced answers. In these situations, the Likert scale omits a neutral response to force an opinion from the survey taker. Going back to our hotel example, the hotel may want to know if you plan to book with them again. They might offer four possible answers. Definitely won't, probably won't, probably will, and definitely will. Structuring your Likert scale survey to force an opinion works best for surveying people at the conclusion of an interaction, such as someone who has contacted customer service or someone who just wrapped up a wonderful week vacationing in paradise. It's important to get the survey taker to express a definite opinion, which you can safely assume they have formed by that point. A very standard customer service example would be how do you rate the customer service you received, to which the survey taker would choose from the options that vary from excellent to poor? Some research has found that the order of responses can influence the results of the survey, especially if the most positive answer appears first. Varying the order of answer options, splitting putting positive answers first and last can create a more reliable cumulative result. Forced answers are a survey game changer. Sometimes a neutral answer to a survey isn't helpful, and luckily we have forced answers to the rescue. Now that we've learned about what makes Likert scales the amazing researching and surveying tools that they are, let's take a closer look at each one of those types to better understand them. Coming in first as the most common Likert scale is the four-point answer option. This scale is better known as the forced scale. It allows for a range of responses, but takes away the ability to answer with a neutral response. Here's an example. How do you rate the helpfulness of the customer service representative? The four answer options would be something like unhelpful, less helpful, more helpful, and very helpful. Not having a neutral option forces a survey taker to make a choice in how helpful or not helpful their service was. Again, this scale is used primarily for customer service-based surveys where one single question might be all that you get out of a survey taker. So you better make it a good one. There's also the five point Likert scale. This one is likely the most familiar to the general public. It allows for responses across the board, a neutral response, two polar opposite responses, and two intermediate responses. Let's look at an example of a five point Likert scale. This prompt is an example of an employee motivation survey. Its goal is to gauge general workplace disposition. Notice the answer options include one neutral response, two polar opposite responses, strongly agree and strongly disagree, and two intermediate responses, agree and disagree. A lot of research has been done on the well-known and often used five-point scale, primarily on the use of the neutral response. While there are indications that a neutral response option will make it more likely a survey taker will answer, an answer of no opinion is inherently difficult to interpret. Last, we have the seven-point Likert scale. It's very similar to the five-point scale we just discussed, but it adds two more intermediate options between the neutral response and extreme responses options. Here's an example of a seven-point answer scale from a public opinion survey. Reducing deficit spending is crucial to maintaining the economic health of the country. The response options are strongly disagree, disagree, somewhat disagree, neither agree or disagree, somewhat agree, agree, and strongly agree. Remember when I mentioned that the Likert scale is a wonderful tool because it not only gathers a response, but also how much importance the survey taker puts on their opinion. Well, this is where we really see this take action. The seven point scale is considered better for determining how much importance a survey taker places on something. In this particular example, we gather the intensity of their individual opinion on reducing deficit spending. Well, that about wraps up all the ins and outs of the Likert scale. Look at you, you're a Likert pro now.
That was a lot of helpful information to digest. Let's recap. You've learned that the Likert scale came from the one and only Rensis Likert, a social psychologist, and that Rensis knew what he was doing creating these innovative psychometric scales. They're particularly effective because of the types of questions they ask, the use of four, five, or seven answer options, and the occasional forced answer. All these components are put together to create a highly versatile and intuitive survey that will continue to be used for many generations to come. Thanks for tuning in to Jotform. I'm Noel, and we'll see you again soon.